Um, but sometimes I just feel like it's not enough. Like, I don't remember the last time I've I've lost to a gym leader, honestly. Yeah, I, I know. I know what you mean. If you were to describe as a game developer what would make your ideal Pokemon game or what you think needs to get done to fix these things, what would you do? I think the old formula is slowly dying. Welcome to the first episode of the Red Essence Games podcast. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm Armand. And we are Red Essence Games. We are video game developers actually working on a video game right now called Traveler's Refrain, which you can wishlist on Steam. But we are also lifelong gamers, and um, this podcast will be all about just like new games that are coming out, some nostalgia stuff, some game dev stuff, and just overall like our experience playing games and what we love so much about them. So why don't we dive right into it? Like, what what have you been playing recently? Uh, me, uh, I've been playing um, a lot of Sea of Stars. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we both pretty much cut back a lot on gaming because yeah. uh, we're both dads now. But yeah. um, you know, as you know, things kind of um, as we figure things out, you know, in in that we I get a bit more time to game. So yeah. uh, Sea of Stars has been my go to. I mean, I can pick it up and put it down like pretty easily yeah, you're playing on switch right i'm playing on switch yeah. yeah um and that that makes it pretty fun um i can kind of take it wherever and just keep playing i do like to sit down and enjoy it for hours on end yeah. so i can really enjoy the story but you know it's sometimes. a lengthy game too it like, is surprisingly yeah. it is yeah so um i've been enjoying that you know tears of the kingdom i uh, love that mm-hmm. i beat that one a couple months ago and i sunk like 150 plus hours <laughs> into crazy. it so I just got lost in it, yeah. so I I love that one. Been playing uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel, um, and I also play uh, Overwatch, yeah. and I also play Gigantic, which is making a comeback too. That's so awesome! I'm pretty excited for that. Um, it's got a big community, yeah. and uh, they're re-releasing the game as the Rampage Edition. So um, it's kind of like a MOBA shooter, yeah, uh, like a third-person MOBA shooter. So I'm very basic into MOBAs, like I. I've never really played MOBAs, so mm. uh, I think that's something I want to explore in the future. But yeah, and and are they bringing it back because of the community? Like, how how has that process gone? Do you know much about it? Well, so it it goes back pretty far, but um, the original developer Motiga, they were basically working with Microsoft initially to release the mm. game. They only released it on Xbox and like the Windows Store, something mm. like that back then. And um, yeah, <laughs> the Windows Store, yeah. So, you know, things didn't, it didn't get the publicity it, it, it should have because mm. also around that time was Overwatch came out and Maybe it sort of killed the game. a little bit. Yeah, for gotcha. sure. And, um, I think it just didn't get the attention that it deserved. Mm. Um, there, there are some things about the game that are not perfect. I mean, but that's also because it's kind of had a, sh- you know, displaced development, you know, here and there mm. they um, they've worked on the game, but eventually got sold to Perfect World Entertainment. And then um, from there, I believe Gearbox owns it now. So Gearbox has been, uh, I guess, keeping tabs on the community. Is Gearbox Borderlands? Yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, so Gearbox has been keeping tabs on it. And um, they're, I guess they found out from the community, you know, this mm. game is um, fun, fun and, <laughs> and people love it. So they, I guess, decided, hey, let's let's bring it back. So yeah. they did like a beta event, and everyone got really excited. Like, are they are they like testing stuff to yeah, bring yeah. it back? And then they they just showcased the the rampage edition. So that's awesome. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So I've also been playing Sea of Stars, as you mm-hmm. know. I'm a lot further behind than you are. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just kind of chipping away at it. I'm one of those people. I feel like I play like five games at the same time, which yeah, is probably are. not a good thing. Yeah. But that's what happens with these giant open world games too. It's mm-hmm. like you kind of. Not, not totally lose interest, but like you get to a good stopping point and then something else comes out and inevitably you're like, all right, I want to try something new and take a yeah. little break. So that's kind of what has been going on with me. But Sea of Stars, man, is a beautiful game. Like mm-hmm. it's just the the art style alone is half the time you're looking at it and you're like, how the heck did they make all of this stuff in 2D? Mm-hmm. Like with all the shadows and the light lighting and everything. And I'm not entirely sure. I, I should probably look at the game development, but like I think it's probably like a 2.5D thing, mm-hmm. where like they sh- they shine a light and it casts a shadow on the actual like sprite, right? I think it is something like that. I don't think it's right? pure 2D. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. they like is, have systems impressive. where they fill water and everything yeah. as well, and I'm like, how the heck yeah, did they yep, do that? Yep, that would be a lot to manage in a 2D environment for yeah. sure. Um, with, with all the foreground, background stuff. I know. And- yeah. 
So that's been really fun. And what I like most about it is it feels like there's a nice gameplay loop where you're like adventuring, you do some story stuff, you do some combat, and then they kind of drop you off in a little dungeon. Mm -hmm. And the dungeons are not super hard, but they're not super easy. They kind of give you just enough hints to like get through it. And it's just an overall fun experience. It doesn't ever, I don't think I've ever felt frustrated with it which is which is kind of nice mm-hmm. even with zelda sometimes you're sitting there you're like scratching your head like what the heck do they want me to do right now you know but that's part yeah. of the the hook of zelda as well i would say zelda is definitely for cha- more hardcore, it's, it's hardcore puzzlers, puzzlers. <laughs> yeah for yeah. sure it's definitely i mean sea of stars they still have some challenging puzzles but not in the same realm of challenging as zelda mm-hmm. i think um do, they, zelda- do you feel like they get harder the further you get in the game or has it been kind of you felt like a good gradual increase in difficulty uh good question i think i think it's been pretty steady mm. um like because there's only really two main mechanics plus a third mm. which i won't spoil for you in case you haven't gotten there yet but um you know there's three main mechanics really in mm. adventuring in the world aside from climbing and and doing stuff so yeah you just got to examine the environment is really what it comes down to, got like it. how you assess the environment and what you can do with your three abilities. So I thought that was pretty neat. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But I love the game too. It's, it's, the story is just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the writing and everything and the storyline and the characters are really cool. The enemies are really cool. Um, the music is just, yeah, it's I epic. Mean, Cause it's, I'm, I think the Chrono Trigger composer. Well, it's, uh, Eric Brown who is, um, I think he's newer on the scene, but he, mm. he alongside the composer from uh, Chrono Aren't Trigger, you? they work together. But I believe Eric gotcha. Brown wrote most of the tracks, oh, which I is, see. um, yeah, I mean, he, he's amazing. I, yeah. Uh, phenomenal yeah, work on that nice. soundtrack. Yeah. 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 Nice. So yeah, I've been playing, I've been playing that. I've been playing Spider-Man too. Yeah. And then FF7 Rebirth just came out. Mm-hmm. So obviously I've been putting hours into that yeah that looks like <laughs> that, a good game it's very very good yeah. it's very fun i will say we'll probably yeah. talk about it more maybe next week okay but like um it's amazing yeah. it's amazing okay. yeah also i will say spider-man 2 i'm a huge spider-man nerd but like yeah. spider-man in itself is just like you they're not lying with their marketing you feel like spider-man when yeah. you're swinging around that city and i will say the coolest thing and and especially with like next gen stuff in general is the fast travel stuff Mm -hmm. there's literally no load time so you open your menu you go to the part of the city you want to go to and it's showing you the city map and then you click fast travel and it zooms into the city right into game mode and spider-man just like swings in like there's no fade to black nothing it just you're in you're in that zone so i remember the days of the ps3 ps4 where you're like sitting there like like instagram Mm -hmm. because chilling right now what was that game that took like 10 minutes to load a scene was it metal gear solid 4 well, metal gear solid 4 but the honestly the biggest uh offender of that for me had been uh final fantasy 15 did you play oh. that on ps4 or did you play it on pc i played it on ps4 yeah that one i remember Dude, that took forever yeah. but once you were in you were kind of in yeah but yeah that it's man it's so nice it's the same with uh ff rebirth like dude i click fast travel it fades to black and then fades right in so it's it just makes the whole gameplay experience a lot smoother right so yeah that's that's been pretty fun Mm -hmm. okay so as i'm sure you guys know the new uh pokemon trailer came out and that's going to be what we're talking about today so why don't we start off by just watching the trailer together and maybe we can uh sure have some thoughts on it because it's a pretty vague trailer we did already watch it once but you know my memory's a little little hazy so I love these disclaimers too. Not actual gameplay footage. So I think it's clear they're already showing us like, okay, Pokemon Legends Arceus was more like back in time. This almost seems either modern or even futuristic, like with all of this Hologram glowy stuff. stuff. Yeah. And I know Pokemon does go pretty sci-fi, but I don't know. I'm like so curious what what this world is going to be like. 
Yeah, me too. And and based on this uh, era of Pokemon, I believe it's the XY era, right? So is it? I'm. That's what I'm not sure about. Is that what this? Oh, is that what this world is? Is this the the Ka big Kalos? I think. Oh, I think it's Kalos with yeah. the like electric power plant or something. Uh, is that Final Fantasy Seven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Midgar, dude. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. So, because I do remember that city where like you'd roller skate through it, and you is that what? what I you're think that's it. Yeah, I think this is Kalos because oh. Z. Wait, I think, no, it says Lumios City. Lumios, Lumios. Kalos is the region. Oh, oh, oh. Lumios. See, look, the Z looks like a Pikachu tail. Yeah, but it does. But it has the sh the um the patterning of Zygarde, oh, okay. which is uh, a legendary from the xyz i don't think z was actually a game it was from like the god was it. it a game i can't i can't remember honestly and then they're bringing back mega oh this, this makes sense oh, yeah, okay yeah. okay okay man i mean you are way more of a uh you you Kalos know a lot palace is back <laughs> You know a lot more about Pokemon than I do, so I'm going to probably refer to your knowledge uh, for this. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, man, I was hoping I would find some stuff to kind of extrapolate from this, and maybe it's just my own, like, lack of Pokemon knowledge. But maybe that's something I'll talk about quick, is, like, I am kind of a lapsed Pokemon fan. So I played Red, Blue, and then I went to Silver and Gold, and then I didn't play anything until... um platinum and that's actually a funny story because you want to know how i got my pokemon platinum game you found it on the bus no it's it's almost better than that yeah. <laughs> dude i if you guys know dave and busters i literally saved up dave and busters tickets for like a decade i'm yeah. not even kidding <laughs> like i had 30 thousand holy crap and i went to dave and busters when i was like i don't know 17 years old or something yeah. and i went to the little prize shop pokemon was there and i was like I haven't played a Pokemon game in a while. I'm just mm -hmm. going to spend all my tickets on that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's worth it because I think that mm -hmm. game is worth like a hundred bucks now. So yeah, I, I think it's more than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, that one was pretty fun. I don't, I actually don't know if I beat that one, but I played that one and then I kind of lapsed again until um actually X and Y because I was like, oh man, I'm really excited about mm -hmm. 3D. And that, mm -hmm. I think that was the first 3D one. I think right? so. Yeah. So I was like, this is a cool change up. I'm going to start back there. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think I skipped Sun and Moon. I heard those were really good, but I, unfortunately... You didn't play Black and White, and you didn't play Sun and Moon. But, but Black and White was before X and Y. That's correct. Yeah, so like X and Y was kind of like my big reintroduction. And then I skipped, I skipped Sun and Moon, but then I've played all of the Switch ones. So I've played, uh, what is it, Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield and... Um... Legends Arceus. I played a, a little bit of the... Um, what is it? Uh, I wanted to say "Hey you Pikachu," but it's <laughs> it's not "Hey you Pikachu." Let's go Pikachu. Let's go Pikachu. And let's go Eevee. Yeah. I played that, yeah. and then easiest I, Pokemon game ever. I know it was kind of nice. To, yeah, it was kind of nice to get back into that world, but like the dude, even the throwing mechanic, it was like it never threw straight. Yeah, like no matter like I was like angling my little Joy-Con like perfect, and it was yeah. like <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, let's. I know I'm gonna get on a rant if I talk about modern Pokemon <laughs> games, because, uh, oh man, I feel like a lot of people our generation kind of feel this way. But uh, going yeah. back on the topic of lapsed Pokemon games, yeah, yeah, I feel like. Um, Wait, I never, first of all, have you played all of them? I've never played Platinum. Okay, and then for but each, Platinum was uh was Platinum Black and Diamond, White Diamond oh, and, Diamond and Di Pearl Pearl yeah okay okay so I. You know, obviously, like, I couldn't afford to get, like, every version yeah. at every time. But yeah, yeah. every now and then, I think I would. But, like, me and my brother would get one. Like, he would get one, and I would get the opposite. Gotcha. Um, so, I played uh, I played every generation. Mm -hmm. So, I played Blue, Gold, um, and then Sapphire, which is my favorite. Mm. Um, and then uh, I played... What came after that? It was... Uh, uh, Diamond and Diamond Pearl. Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. I played Diamond. Uh, and, then and then after that was white. black and white. I and played black and white too. <laughs> I think I played uh, uh, white version, mm. and my brother had black, so white version. And then uh, after that was X and Y. I played X, and then after that I played um, came after that. It was uh, Sword and Shield. 
Or was there one in between there? Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon. That's right. I yeah, played yeah. Sun. I played Sun One and Sun Two, and Sun Two was actually really good. I forgot they even had a sequel yeah. of those. Yeah. Huh. They were both good, but I mean Sun Two was just so good. Really? Huh. Um and um and then I played uh Shield and then I played uh Violet. And I've also played Pokemon Arceus. Yeah. Or yeah, Ar- Legends Arceus. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Um and, and I also and played hey, Let's Go Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> hey you Pikachu. Oh my god. I actually I rented that game from Blockbuster back Did in you? the day. Yeah, it came in that big box yeah. with a little dinky microphone yeah, and you'd yeah. be like, "Hey you Pikachu." And he would just not even look at you. Yeah. You yeah. just start cussing at Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. No. Uh, anyway, uh yeah, so I from my opinion, it's been kind of like I feel like if I don't play a Pokemon game that comes out, if I miss one, I feel like I might stop playing altogether. Uh, I see. Because yeah. I kind of feel like I've outgrown it a bit, mm. but I still like love it. Yeah. Because I love the adventure of it. Like, you know, starting out, picking your starter, like mm-hmm. getting your, you know, finding Pokemon out in the wild that like yep. look cool. And you're yep. just like, I want this guy. Yeah. Um. And then you just kind of build your party and you go through and you're challenged throughout the game with the gym leaders and stuff. Mm-hmm. But man, I don't know. It's like the games have just been so much easier and it's just like I not know. not as fun anymore, you know? Well, I will say though, I do think, let, I was just thinking about, okay, what's been my favorite one in recent memory? And I, it's it's hard because each one has their own thing that's like, whoa, this is really cool that they did this. Mm-hmm. But but they don't compound on these mechanics. Mm-hmm. And it's like, um, we were just talking about Zelda. I feel like Zelda is a good example of mm-hmm. like each game kind of adds something to the next game. You can mm-hmm. see how they've kind of grown. Mm-hmm. You know, even like with, uh, let's say, Skyward Sword. To, to Breath of the Wild, which is like kind of crazy that that was the, right. the transition of the mainline once. But like Skyward Sword had the the flying and stuff like that and the like hang gliding thing. And that was a main mechanic then mm-hmm. in in uh, Breath of the Wild. Right. You know, but it feels like Pokemon's always like two steps forward, one steps once or it's like three steps back almost. And um, what was kind of interesting, I felt honestly, is uh, Arceus was like in recent memory, the most fun one that i played yeah and that's why i'm excited about this uh, z to a even though i think it's kind of a dumb name <laughs> <laughs> it's a little goofy i'm not gonna lie yeah, but... i don't know i don't know what they're doing with their naming convention but um it's like the Wii and the wii u yeah yeah, yeah. Z to a. <laughs> yeah but um i think that i think that arceus like was actually the most challenging from you know between sword and shield and uh, Sc- uh scarlet and violet right um because like the, you had the um, the red eyed Pokemon, I forget what they were called. The red eyed ones. The red eyed ones. <laughs> the ones You'll that like just out. randomly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon. Go play Travelers Refrain yes. or go wish list. Go wish list. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, I don't remember what they were called, but they would just like come and attack you. Uh, yeah, they were like the hostile. Yeah, and it felt also like very early on in the game, like you were totally, you were weak. It really felt like you were weak and you had to get stronger in order mm-hmm. to overcome everything. Whereas right. the new Pokemon games, it feels like you're like this the whole time in battling. And, the, and then it actually gets like this where you're like so overpowered, like right. halfway through the game mm-hmm. that everything's just a cakewalk. So I don't know. Yeah, I think they need to bring back a light level of grinding in some of these games because uh, like Sea of Stars is a different uh, case. Because Sea of Stars is like, the game is just challenging throughout, especially if you have those, um, the relics that like make you take more damage and whatnot. Mm. But I feel like Sea of Stars, the enemies just get progressively harder. Yeah. But I feel like in Pokemon, it's like you level up with the other Pokemon. And I know the the um, the gym leaders and some of the trainers, they have boosted EV Pokemon. So mm-hmm. like they their stats are kind of like pushed in a certain direction to make them tougher. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I just feel like it's not enough. Like... I don't remember the last time I've I've lost to a gym leader, honestly. Yeah, I, I know. I know what you mean. And it's actually making me think, like, if you were to describe as a game developer what would make your ideal Pokemon game or what you think needs to get done to fix these things, mm-hmm. what would you do? Do you think it's just a grinding aspect or do you think it's like an, a more overarching systems 
thing that needs to get kind of overhauled? Well, I think the old formula is slowly dying mm. in a way. And I think that us old, more old school gamers, like, yeah, we'd like to see maybe a more old school style game, maybe bring back like the old school, like style of graphics and stuff too. Mm. Um, but I just, it's one of those things where I feel like I maybe don't know if the game that I want from them is the game that I'm going to want to play. Mm. But I'm just kind of hoping that they figure it out and they, they give us the game that we want, you know, and without me having to like think about, oh, I want all these things. I mean, yeah, yeah I want like a tougher game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, bring back a light level of, gr of grinding, you know, like I died on Lieutenant Surge, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 times. Yeah. Maybe 20, you know, before I beat him. And <laughs> yeah. And the, the third gym leader from the, um, the second one, the one with the mill tank, mm -hmm. I died like 30 times yeah. uh, trying to beat her. So, and, and that was like, okay, I got to go grind and get stronger and come back. And, um, and then that was like a good feeling to overcome that. Cause like you got through that with like your, your Pokemon. So I think I don't really know fully what I want. I know maybe, I know people have been asking for this for a while, but like more of like a 3d version that, you can you can have like a base set of moves and like control the Pokemon in the arena, mm. kind of like in the anime. More I think is what actiony. Is that what you're saying? Or yeah, like imagine the anime. Yeah, but like we have control over the Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost like a fighting game, dude. That actually just makes me think about because um, I think the system that they have in Final Fantasy VII Remake mm -hmm. and Rebirth would actually be perfect for Pokemon, where it's kind of this. Uh, it's like a cross between action combat and kind of turn base so mm -hmm. like for example exactly yeah, yeah maybe yeah. the pokemon like you do run around with them you can dodge and stuff like mm -hmm. that you can do just basic attacks but then you you power up your special moves and then you got to go into a menu to kind of like mm -hmm. choose that and they like run run the attacks yeah i think just like this... both players get a a brief like moment to pick their move and it's like mm -hmm. a like a delay period where both players oh, get to pick cool. something. Like time slows down. Yes. And then like you could be on like a high ground and you have to pick like maybe your opponent's mm. going to stay on the ground. So you yeah. want to do like a ground move or you like anticipate they're going to go in the air. And sure. You like, you like try to figure out their strategy. Yeah, that would be awesome. So like why haven't they done it yet? You know, Dude, like what are know. they doing? Well, that's what that's what else I was going to say about Arceus was uh, they also had that that mechanic was probably the, the biggest change up out of anything they had the different styles. Like, right. wasn't there like a, I forget what they were called, like fighting style or whatever. Uh, yeah, swift style and yeah, strong so style. Like, yeah, like strong style. So like if you chose strong style, I think it would slow down your next attack. So it's like you were doing a double damage or increased damage, but at the risk of having to wait an extra turn. So like, that's kind of a small tweak, but like those are the things right. that are needed where they just need to like totally overhaul the actual combat system. Because that whole strategy of four moves, you know what I think it is now that I, sometimes you got to talk things through in order to like mm -hmm. realize what's going on. I think back in the day, there was 150 Pokemon. It was based around grinding and it was like, everything was so um, custom, every like part of the level. But now that the games are becoming more and more open world, it's like, you can kind of go out of your way to just get this like super strong Pokemon and just mm -hmm. annihilate everyone. Right. And it the game shouldn't work in a way where you have to rein yourself back in yeah. order to make it a challenge. Mm -hmm. It should be like you should almost be rewarded if you do want to kind of go out of your way and be really strong right. through mechanics of some sort. Yeah. Whether it's like exploration, <clears throat> like maybe you need to do, I don't know, some sort of quest mm -hmm. to to get something really strong. Right. You know, otherwise yeah. you are gonna be grinding a little bit or having a tougher time. Right. And, so yeah and going off of that um i had this idea sometime at some point where one of the th cool things about pokemon is catching the pokemon yeah right? and adding yeah, them to yeah. your party so the thing that tends to happen in pokemon games though is like you at least this is what i do is yeah. i try to figure out which pokemon i'm going to end the game with mm. and then I've, i'll find those pokemon in the park i won't like specifically go and find them but i'll yeah. i'll kind of filter them as i go like sure. do i want this person you know not person this pokemon yeah. in my park <laughs> this pokemon this in human my being yeah, this human. i want to summon do, this yeah. guy <laughs> uh do i want this pokemon in my party at, yeah. at the end of the game am i gonna have to replace it mm -hmm. like these thoughts are going through my head so feel like in the older generations um and this is one thing they've done better mm -hmm. 
this is a good better thing that they've done is the Pokemon are more in your level range mm -hmm. when you're like kind of out and about. So you could catch one and use it mm. in a battle, like, you know, in the next battle, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like in the older games, they made it so that I guess you could grind more easily because you could go into the grass and just kill a bunch of Pidgeys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds cruel. <laughs> yeah. cruel. I know. But yeah, you, you could do that and, you know, just level up your Pokemon. Yeah. Um, but well, the other thing, yeah. sorry, the other thing too that they did in the very old games is they, it, you were always at like a type disadvantage. It's like you right. had to, that, that's, I guess, kind of similar to what I was saying. Like even in the, the Brock fight, mm -hmm. you know, he had all stone or rock type Pokemon so it's like you had to grind to get the ability to even be effective against it. Well, if you pick Charmander, yeah, for sure, you yeah. are in trouble. And then they just give you like bug Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? They give you a Pikachu, a bug Pokemon, but a Metapod. Al although um, I believe one of the bug Pokemon, you can evolve to get some sort of grass ability or you can level them up to get a grass ability that becomes effective against... So it was kind of like you're you're being rewarded for going out of your way to figure out some of these right. how these mechanics are working. Right. This is the other thing too. I'm maybe going on a bit of a tangent, but dude, there's so many types now. Why is there never a graph in the game that explains you know why? how the types work? Because you have to go to a specific place in the game that's a school where a little kid tells you, no. did you know that grass types are good against yeah, but rock that's, Pokemon? But that's <laughs> all they tell you. They tell you the basic ones. Like, what is steel good against? What is very good against dude i don't know yeah i still don't know and i played like i always have to remember Pokemon those games. ones because i feel like the old ones were ingrained in my brain but the newer types i always have to like think about it first there should just it be like just come to my in head. the school like an image on the board that you can expand to see <laughs> how these all work together i shouldn't yeah. have to like guess no nope. and and what what else is so like i don't know just dumb is like they know that people don't know these types. So instead of mm -hmm. telling you how the system works, mm -hmm. they just start showing you like, oh, you, uh, you've you already done a grass type move on this rock Pokemon. So now we're just forever going to show you that rock type Pokemon are weak against right, grass. Right, right. There's like no Super memorization. Effective. Yeah, there's no memorization anymore. Yeah. So I don't know. At least they don't tell you right away, but still, I, I know. guess. Back in the day, you just had to remember everything. It's kind of like, why even have this system if you're not going to explain how the system works? <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess you just figure it out. Oh, maybe dude. maybe write it down on a piece of paper. I, I guess. If you're a man. true gamer. Yeah, if you're yeah. a true gamer. I don't know. But yeah, uh, I wanted to jump back to my, my last point yeah. about um, catching the Pokemon in your yeah, party. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting if at some point in the game, you lose all your Pokemon. Mm. Not permanently, but... Maybe you get captured or something and they take your Pokemon uh, and yeah. you have to start over. Maybe they, uh, maybe you find one that becomes your friend yeah. and you use it to catch a new Pokemon. Team Rocket just like steals all your That's Pokemon. right. That's right. Uh, so they take all your stuff yeah. and you're like, okay, now I have to find a new set of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So now you can almost play like two separate storylines. Mm. Maybe you play two different characters even, mm -hmm. right? Like why haven't they done that? Why yeah. can't you just, what's so hard about like just adding a new character that has a different set of Pokemon. What's so hard about adding voice acting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Come man. on, they're just... I know, I know. I, it's I like they get it. But, but, but this is the other thing. It's like they know what people want. Why aren't yeah. they just giving it to us? You know, like they, there's no way they mm -hmm. don't know this yeah. stuff. Like there's just no way, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. Why in Arceus can you only fly downwards? <laughs> you can't fly. <laughs> you have a you have a I was Pokemon. So excited to get that bird. <laughs> it just goes down. You have a Pokemon with wings, <laughs> and you can just fall with it. Dude. <laughs> I don't know, it's man. So silly. It's I think I think what's so frustrating about it is like two things. Okay. This is literally the biggest, <laughs> it's literally the biggest franchise in the entire world. They have yeah. more money than God, okay? Yeah. There, there's no excuse to do this. And second of all, it's just, they they know what we want. Like, just just put these things in the game. I, it feels like they kind of half-bake their projects with ideas. And like I said, too, they're so concerned with 
with uh creating a brand new mechanic every time instead of taking what was already cool like mega evolutions was really cool why didn't they just add mega evolutions into the next game instead of being like here's giant pokemon yeah. suddenly yeah uh well i think some of the stuff is kind of region locked like the giant po the gigantamax and mm -hmm. pokemon they're kind of region locked yeah because there need to be um did you play that one yeah yeah. Sword Sword Shield. Shield. yeah yeah you need to be like in a specific zone that allows for that energy yeah, yeah. so i don't know maybe they create a device that creates a little portal but yeah yeah i mean um yeah what, what were we talking about just now just the fact that it feels like they're they're reinventing the wheel every oh. time instead of adding on to mechanics that they knew worked and just right. making them better with each game yeah or more interesting yeah I, I, you know what? I think it, it's partly in due to the fact that their card game is so successful that they are like, we need to introduce new card mechanics. Yeah. So we're going to, well, you know, that and also the competitive Pokemon scene is really big. Um, and I mean, I watched some Wolfie, Do you know, Wolfie, mm -hmm. he's a, um, streamer, he's a streamer, but he's also like a, a world champion too. Mm -hmm. So I watch his videos cause he talks through a lot of like the competitive Pokemon. It's like stuff I never thought about. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, he's like turns ahead of people, like yeah. thinking about stuff to do, and he yeah. they use Pokemon in the competitive scene that you would never think about using. Mm. Um, so like Weedle, <laughs> not Weedle, but <laughs> stuff like uh, yeah, just like poop Pokemon, like yeah, that. Yeah, just yeah. they're not good, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's interesting there. But I also watched a video recently where they talked about it was um. It was a video, random video that came up on my YouTube that was like, why doesn't Pokemon just make a decent game anymore? Mm -hmm. And yeah, their games are good. They sell because kids see them and they're like, whoa, this is cool. This is Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And I think if I was a kid right now, I probably wouldn't have these complaints. Dude, I don't know, man. Because think about the other games that are out that are the same sort of scope. That's why it feels like they're half-baked. Like Scarlet and Violet, like they came out with all these bugs and like if you look at it man it's like it's just it's ugly and mm -hmm. that, that again that's another um design choice it's not even a mechanics thing but why didn't they take the aesthetic of sword and shield but just make that better they just they were like let's make all new models let's like totally change the graphical look of it you know i i honestly think sword and shield looks better because it's more cohesive and stylized and mm -hmm. they're like oh we want to go more realistic i guess was I, I don't know i don't even know i mean the graphics just look like shit <laughs> <laughs> but then you look at i mean you look at breath of the wild i get it i guess that it's like a different you know echelon of yeah, game but breath of the wild is behind but it looks well it I mean, it looks beautiful. I though, mean, yeah, the lighting to... and stuff looks really nice yeah, uh, yeah. in the game. Um, it, it's like they, they design their art style around the limitations of the console right. instead of letting the limitations of the console hinder the entire graphical look right. of, the, of the game. If they were so concerned about this, like, you know, look, they should have just... I mean, I guess they wanted to make it look like a big open, world, open yeah. world area, yeah. but I mean... Maybe it's just not time for them to make a game like this because the consoles can't even handle it, you know? Yeah. Well, I do hear that the Switch 2 is, or whatever they're going to call it, is coming out, like, relatively yeah. soon, so... Switch U. Switch. <laughs> Switch Wii. Switch Wii. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think that hopefully that will help, but also, like, I think almost... Yeah, it's like they tried to make this big open world. If they just had it be more of a streamlined mm -hmm. experience, maybe it would have felt a little bit more like polished, you know? Like mm -hmm. you want you want a polish out of these Nintendo games and it's like every other Nintendo first party game, it feels like, you know, there's minimal to no bugs. Right. You know, it looks extremely yeah. presentable. Dude, and like okay, here's another Mario Odyssey was a launch title. Dude, that game looks leagues better yeah. than Pokemon, and it it's so still good. really stylized, yeah. you know? So it's like, what happened? I don't know. And here's another thing. It's like, why is there no story in the game? I know. What's up with that? I don't know. Because I think that's, that's something else I was thinking about is I think the reason in general we keep coming back to Pokemon is the world and the idea of the catching, and you're like on this adventure. Right. And it's like, it's such a cool concept. 
like the fact that it feels like soulless almost sometimes when you're running through these games mm -hmm. is like just why it, that's also why um you know even in arceus like i loved the i loved playing it but like you go out into that open world and it's just mm -hmm. like completely empty it it again just felt like what where is the game mm -hmm. you know yeah so hopefully taking it back to the z day, <laughs> z day <laughs> game they take all these feed this feedback it it might actually be cool do you think you're going to just be in the city or do you think they'll uh, probably have to let you no they'll let it, you right? out no this is i think it's just one city in the whole game you think yeah you i mean think? japanese yes, titles do tend to put you in like a little enclosed space it's like what's the outside world like yeah, yeah. but I don't know. Maybe this is the whole game. Yeah. Hopefully not. I mean, I'm sure. I hope there's going to be more than just that. But, yeah. Um. Because it looks promising. I mean. Yeah, we won't know. It's well, I always <laughs> hope for the best and and get <laughs> you always hope for and the get best. let down. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I, I want to give them the chance to redeem the themselves, and I think with the whole power roll thing, like I'm not going to get into that, but yeah, I think they're either going to learn from it or they're gonna yeah, you know. Keep doing what keep doing what they're doing, and doing. I wanted to talk about this real quick because I never finished it. But mm -hmm. that video I watched on YouTube was saying yeah, yeah. how why would they come out with a multi year Pokemon game when they're making so much money on these, you know, quick and easy Pokemon titles that mm -hmm. they're making every year. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're raking in so much money I know. from these games because you know little kids, more people are getting access to consoles, and you know people see Pokemon the new pokemon and mm -hmm. they just go and buy it you know and um i know for sure nora is going to play through the older ones mm -hmm. uh, maybe not right away but <laughs> yeah i'll have her play through those because you know well it's culture you know <laughs> you got the culture you know well maybe maybe it's actually time for them this might be a good thing for them to do where they had you know sun and moon sun and moon 2 they they make a game that they know has a good foundation and then if they're if they're bent on making you know an, a another one the next year they're using the same world kind of like uh tears of the kingdom to breath of the wild like they had enough assets and base mechanics mm -hmm. set up to to actually expand on the world instead of like again reinventing the wheel every single time yeah you know they can unlock or it's like you know let's say the map is like this you know in the next game the map is like this like it expands outwards there's mm -hmm. new pokemon on the perimeter whatever yeah um but yeah, I think even even in terms of like it be it's an RPG, you know, like where are the quests? Where are the where RPG are, elements? Where are the RPG elements? Like, you why know? can't you like level up your speed or something? Well, I guess you can. <laughs> I mean, you kind of can, right? With I the guess. EV training sort of thing. I meant like as your character, like run fast. Oh, like why can't you just? Well, honestly, in the newest game, you could have could have done that with your Coridon or what is it, Maridon, whatever. Like you know. Throughout the game, there was you a get game, yeah, yeah, new abilities for them to traverse yeah. more. Like you in Sword and climb. Shield, you could upgrade your bike, I think, something like that. I think make you it could faster. just make it go faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, wait, you could uh, run it through rivers too. Didn't it have like little floaty wheels? Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's, it, but but again, it just it feels so like basic. Like there's mm -hmm. there's ways you could just make this stuff bigger and better, mm -hmm. and um it's 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 almost as if they're just not looking at mm -hmm. the competition to see like oh what are cool things that other games that are similar are doing that we mm -hmm. could apply to a pokemon type world because yeah. i think that would in inevitably make like the ultimate pokemon game i think okay if i were to if i were to say it needs to have the arceus catching mechanic because that's fun mm -hmm. i thought that was cool like crouching down like i've yeah, always yeah, yeah. wanted to be able to just like sling pokeballs mm -hmm. and um so it needs. But well, you have to have a virtual pokeball that you can throw in real life. No. That's prime gaming right there. No, because then it's gonna be like hey, you Pikachu uh, or whatever it's called. Yeah, I I literally keep forgetting what is it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? Like literally yeah. in my mind. Let's go Pikachu. In my mind, the box art says hey, you Pikachu. Yeah. On. <laughs> yeah. So it needs a it needs a catching mechanic. It needs an overhauled combat system. It needs quests. So, like, you go into a town. There's some problem happening right. with the town. And they're like, please help us. And only you and your Pokemon. Arceus kind of had that. There was some, like, quests where there was, like, ghosts. And you had to find yeah. them. But, again, it felt so, 
simplistic. Like, make the quest cool. Make yeah, it's the always story like, good. It's always just like some guy standing in the middle of the town. He's like, there's a machoke standing in the way. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Snorlax. There's we a can't Snorlax move right them. there. I can't get past them. <laughs> yeah. Or my, my like, I don't know. Yeah. What's a, what's a dinky Pokemon? Uh, like, my Weedle. My Weedle is sad. Like... <laughs> Like, he can't on. evolve. Give us some villains or something. Like back in the day, we had villains. Like, yeah, that's true too. There's no villains, even now, in the new one. Now all no the villains. now all the villains are like, but we're also your friend. Yeah, exactly. Feel bad for us. I mean, I don't want to spoil the Scarlet and Violet because I yeah. played Violet and I thought the um the villain was yeah. kind of cool, but I feel like the oh, story was kind of cool. Like the very very ending kind of twist thing. Yes. That was cool, but it's like why why do you need to play 60 hours of a game to even know what the point right. of the game is in the, right. in the first place? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean you get to area 0 and it's it's cool. Yeah. And then you do the story stuff and that's it. Yeah, I know. There's, and then there's the guy who's his dog is sick. And like <laughs> Okay, that's like that's fine. You help the guy's dog heal, but there's literally nothing else. I know, I know, I know. So, so it needs it needs a story that has a through line, not just like you play and then at the yeah. ending there's some sort of story. Because X and Y was kind of like that too. There's like a crazy twist at the end. Well, I think X and Y actually has one of the more interesting storylines. I don't remember it fully, but they had that character N. Yeah. Um, and oh, man, I don't remember the exact story of the game, but yeah. yeah. I remember that one had more to it. So I hope this one's maybe a little darker and yeah, yeah. maybe they like bring back some like conflict in the game because I feel like it needs that. Like in, in Scarlet and Violet, like why is everyone like, yeah, like your friend like, I know. in the school? I like, know. It, and it's like, I, I like games that kind of have that happy, fun vibe. But mm -hmm. if there's no conflict, especially if the, the combat or the, the mechanics revolve around fighting each other, like right. there should be some sort of conflict. Um, so the other thing too is it, it needs voice acting. Like it just does. Like it, there's, there's no excuse to have a rocker type character that's going <laughs> while he's like playing his yeah, guitar. Yeah. It's like, dude, what is going on, man? Yeah. And I get that it's a, it's a big RPG still. Again, there's, there's plenty of budget for them mm -hmm. to put in voice acting. Yeah. Even, even if it's like just the cutscenes have voice acting, and then like when you talk to an NPC, like mm -hmm. you just have to read it, that's fine, whatever. But like, there's just no excuse when they're 3D models and their mouths are mm -hmm. moving as if they're saying words, but they're saying nothing. I would honestly play the game with Japanese voice acting. Fine. Because there's it no just, voice acting as there is. So. There just needs to be somebody talking in yeah. the first place. So they started adding that in Zelda yeah, here and there, and that yeah, was pretty cool. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes you feel more immersed. I, I, I get for the longest time, it was like, you know, there's the silent protagonist thing, and it was like, for a while, they were trying to be like, oh, you know, it's just like, this is the way this type of game is. But once you get to the point where the characters look real, and they're like actually mouthing words, mm -hmm. they're not just like flapping their lips, like, it, <laughs> they need to talk. It's just yeah. weird at that point, you know? And then finally, yeah, I'm going to bring my favorite this is my favorite pokemon thing that i have it's uh original inbox japanese pokemon red the art style and the original pokemon game sick mm -hmm. so can you imagine if they brought back this kind of watercolory look even like maybe with a shader that kind of does like some mm -hmm. weird wow. watercolory thing mm -hmm. but with the 3d graphics like that's what i'm talking about that would look really cool that, i would love that right and it, it it would it would have a style because as far as I know, I can't think of anything else that, well, I guess some of these old RPGs kind of had that watercolory style, but it's just beautiful. And I think that it's time to kind of almost like rely on what the franchise's roots were to make it appeal mm -hmm. to the wide audience, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think that would make the perfect Pokemon game. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I didn't bring anything as cool as that, but I just brought Pokemon Binder. Yeah, your um, your sick collection. Yeah, I'm not gonna go and just start showing stuff off, but I do have a um a Umbreon V Max that we pulled on my birthday. Oh yeah. Um, your wife pulled that, right? Yeah, she did. Um <laughs> yeah. Thank you, and she was like, What is this? And you're like, Oh, yeah. put that in a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I 
actually it was the last pack <laughs> oh in, my in god the, in the it was the arceus box from gamestop nice came with um 16 packs or something like that and there were two evolving skies packs in there and uh we're like, let's save the Evolving Skies for last. Yeah. So we opened everything else and we got the Evolving Skies. First pack, you know, we cried. Yeah. That's what you usually do with that yeah, set. Yeah. But um, yeah, the second pack, I mean, she was just like, ha you know, like opening it. And, yeah. and I literally saw it and I like started shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I could not believe that like a peon like me could pull that. That's amazing. So um, it was pretty cool. Great experience. Because I've never pulled a, a card so expensive in my life before. Yeah. So. I think it was just such a cool, like, collector experience yeah, to, to do that. Um, but, yeah, we can get into cards on a whole different... <laughs> we can go down the rabbit hole on cards. I know. But... I know. Dude, okay, I thought of another, one more thing that needs to get switched with, with, uh, with just Pokemon in general. Dude, the status effect text needs to be faster. There's no reason I should be sitting there saying, your Pokemon was poisoned. Oh. You can or like yeah. or like uh fury swipes like yeah. <laughs> like three times yeah. you're just like oh my god let's go dude yeah yeah so i remember in the older games too like uh i think it was it might have been gold or silver like mm -hmm. the bar if you did like a big hit it would literally go at like a snail's pace <laughs> you're like <laughs> am i gonna die here yeah <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you just, like, watch your health slowly deplete. Yeah. Like this. Yep. And, uh, and then you would just get left with, like, one HP. Yeah. But now in the new games, it's like, your Pokemon loves you and yeah. didn't want to die. It's like, <laughs> that's great and all, but, like, can I just play the game the way it's supposed to be played? I know. I know. Like, if my Pokemon's meant to, like, faint here, like, just let him faint. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't need him to survive for me because he I loves know. me. It sounds like we're, like, bashing on it, but I think it's just because we want it to be... And I think a lot of people feel like this too. It's not. It's not just. I know us, it's not just us. You know, but yeah, we wanted to. We wanted to feel immersive, like it was kind of intended to be. Because you, w when you popped in that cartridge back in the day, you felt like, oh my god, I'm actually this dude that's going on this quest. You know, there, there's Team Rocket or whatever the villains are. You're trying, like, there's some sub story going on on top of you, leveling up your guys and. Yeah, fighting people and stuff like that. All right, I think why don't we end it with uh, what's your favorite Pokemon? My favorite Pokemon? Yeah. Uh, we didn't even talk about our favorite Pokemon game, did we? Yeah. What's your favorite Pokemon game? Uh, favorite Pokemon game is probably um. I think you said Pokemon Emerald. Sapphire. Oh, Sa Sapphire. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just a beautiful game. Yeah. I mean, the music. The, I caught all the Pokemon in that one. So I loved really? It. Yeah. Um, loved that one, and you could like dive underwater and like. Mm. You could go to this area with a bunch of different islands and like mm -hmm. you just have to go cave exploring and like there were these Sounds like mystical really cool. elements where you had to like had certain Pokemon in your party to open like secret doors underground. Uh, it was so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like the whole like thing with like Kyogre and Groudon, like there mm. were just these two kaijus that were basically like either flooding the world or making a drought. Oh. And it was just such a cool, that is cool. thing. Like they were villains. Like they yeah, were like yeah. I'm going to make the whole world turn into water, yeah, like a yeah. water planet. Yeah. And it's just like, that was a huge conflict. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, I don't know. It's such a gorgeous game. I loved it. And um, oh, my second favorite would probably be uh, Pokemon Gold, though, because I mm. love the Johto region. Um, and my, I'd have to say my favorite Pokemon is Typhlosion. Typhlosion. Just because, you know, I grew up with the original and, um, mm. you know, Johto and Kanto and... You know, Typhlosion was just so cool. It is cool. Um, not to say I did like Meganium and for Alligator too, but mm. um, <laughs> mm. but Typhlosion was just like way cooler. He was just him. way cooler. I mean, yeah. his stats were speed and special attack, and he mm. was just a, a destroyer. And he also like, I, I mean, I, I, it's he was interesting because he didn't really like look like animal specifically. It was kind of like actually that whole um generation of Pokemon. They looked mm. more unique. Yeah, like unique monsters. They weren't like I'm trying to be. Oh, I guess for alligator was like an alligator. alligator. Was a gator, yeah. But yeah, Typhlosion. I don't even know what he was supposed to look like. He like was a badger like, or something. Kinda, yeah. Fiery badger. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, man. In terms of my favorite Pokemon game, it's like this is. It, I I feel like I'm one of those people that, even though I was 
you know, bashing on the new ones. It feels like every time I play the newest one, I'm like, this is my favorite one just because it has the more mechanics and the more stuff to do. And it feels more like how I'm imagining Pokemon should feel eventually. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I'm like, kind of like, was Arceus my favorite just because I loved playing it? And I, I, I have a very limited experience with the, you know, the 2D one. It's like, I can't really say Red was my favorite because it's like, I just replayed that recently. It's mm -hmm. like, it's fun, but it's a slog kind of. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that Silver was awesome just because you get to the end and you're like, oh my God, I still have a, basically an entirely oh, game other to play. game to play. Like that broke my like little 10 year old yeah. brain so hard dude. so cool it like, was like one of the coolest twists i've yeah. ever seen in any game and then you fight red at the end right fight red yeah that's like so badass yeah dude. you find him like in a cave somewhere yeah so i don't know maybe silver maybe silver maybe so, I mean, arceus yeah. um maybe maybe the new one um I've, I've played a lot less of them than you have i, I feel like if i had played one of these other ones that you're talking about um maybe it would have been my favorite yeah but i thought the diamond and pearl era was kind of meh that's what i've heard yeah i, I didn't play that uh, i didn't play the remakes of those I, maybe we'll get to around arceus to is based on those though i know yeah, yeah that's like the old like version mm -hmm. or whatever a thousand years ago from that um in terms of my favorite pokemon it's mm -hmm. like i'm gonna go old school with this but probably you can say Charizard. It's it's probably Charizard or Mewtwo. Yeah. Mewtwo is just so cool he looking. Cool, it's yeah. like weird. Yeah. Like a weird like cat alien thing. Yeah. So probably one of those two. Like I definitely yeah. have other Pokemon that I like the new ones. Mm -hmm. Like there's new ones that I think are really cool. But uh, yeah. In terms of. In terms of just. I don't my blame favorite. you for picking Charizard. I mean. Hey, Charizard, Charizard is Charizard. Dragon, dude. Like yeah. you can't go wrong. So. So no, yeah. For sure. Cool. All right. Well, I think that wraps up our first episode. Um, definitely check out Traveler's Refrain on Steam. We would love it if you wishlisted the game. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let us know in the comments what you thought about it. What's your favorite Pokemon? And um, stay tuned for more episodes of uh, just general gaming topics and stuff like that. So we will yep. see you guys next time. Thanks, everyone. Yep. See ya. Thank you.